back problems. Everybody's got back problems. Shall I turn the table this way and face the world? I don't mind. Unless you've got back problems. So. I want to talk to people, so I don't want to talk to walls on both sides. So it's <coughs> possible. Yeah, is this okay? Should I just put it aside again? So much. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Indeed all praises due to Allah We praise him, seek his aid and ask his forgiveness We seek refuge in Allah from the evils of ourselves and from the evils of our actions Whomsoever Allah guides, none can misguide and whomsoever Allah leads astray in and can guide. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except for Allah alone, I no partner. And I bear witness that Muhammad is a slave and his messenger. They'll proceed. Beyond any doubt, the best of talks is the book of Allah, the Quran. And the best of guidance is the guidance of his messenger. Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him. And verily, the most evil of all matters are the ones innovated, for every newly innovated matter is an innovation. And every innovation is a misguidance, and every misguidance will lead to the hellfire. Come forward, please. Come forward. The back. Can bring your chair here, please. The one on the chair. Bring your chair. Everybody comes close. Everybody. <clears throat> the title of the topic was the signs, and still the signs of the end of time. Now, from that title, maybe the person who is a listener, he would think that I'm going to be talking about those signs which usually uh, the da'iyah or the students are going to be talking about. These are the signs of, for example, the Dajjal and the major signs like the Qawm, Ya'juj or Ma'juj and so on and so forth. I will not be talking about that because that's in its own class a very important topic. But I want to talk a, a, about a, a, a very important topic, not to say maybe it's more important to address it these days than talking about the Dajjal, because the fitna of the Dajjal is the biggest fitna. That's true. But you see, there are fitnas as well where the person is living it. And this is a, the current climate. If you know what is talking, what is happening now around you, then you are actually uh, totally oblivious. You need to know what how to tackle the issues. There's blood going on and massacres. Can Muhammad please just make sure the kids stay here because they haven't really been told to sit properly. They sit wherever they were not. They're not allowed to sit at the back. So we're going to be talking about the knowledge. The knowledge that would lead and it's still leading the Ummah to disaster. That is the knowledge when it is not being implemented or the knowledge which is not correct knowledge. And then when you have this, you'll have chaos. So we're going to be talking about what happens regarding the knowledge in terms of seeking it and in terms of losing it. What does take place? And from that, we're going to go on right into the conclusion that what is the Ummah supposed to be doing? And wallahi, when I was listening to the dua of Sheikh Ibn Baz rahimahullah, in his prayer, in his taraweeh, in his school or his classes, it's usually his dua is all the time. Allahumma faqih hadihi al-ummah fi dunya. Oh Allah, make this ummah to understand the religion. Oh Allah, give this ummah and grant it an understanding in the religion. The reason behind this, that this ummah, when it does not understand the way how to approach their religion, the way how to tackle their issues according to what Allah had told them and the Prophet ﷺ had told them, they are in disaster. It was narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam had said إِنَّ مِنْ أَشْرَاطِ السَّاعَةِ أَنْ يُلْتَمَسَ الْعِلْمُ عِنْدَ الْأَصَارِ It is from the signs of the day of resurrection that the knowledge is to be sought with those who are asar. And asar, those are the ones who are nothing in terms of knowledge. But why they are being sought to give fatwa? Why is it the people they go to such people to ask for fatwa. Now, this is interpreted according to the scholars. That is, those people, because of the lack of the scholars, they have been empowered in such positions that the people, they come and ask them for the knowledge. 
So they have taken this, the positions, they have taken the fatwa uh, position, and they started giving fatwa. And that does take place when, that is the scholars, the real one, are not there. And those have been empowered because of the money, because of the political situation, because of lots of things, and because of the prevalence of the ignorance. And that is why the Prophet ﷺ said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَقْبِضُ الْعِلْمَ انْتِزَاعًا يَنْتَزِرُهُ مِنَ النَّاسِ وَلَكِنْ يَقْبِضُ الْعِلْمَ بِقَبْضِ الْعُلَمَاءِ Allah does not remove the knowledge. Allah does not lift up the knowledge that is by removing it from the chest of his slaves, from the chest of his worshippers. But he would remove the knowledge by removing the knowledgeable people. How does he remove the knowledgeable people? He would set them aside or pass death upon them. That means they will die, they will decrease in their number, and they will not be in position for the people to ask them the questions. Until, until he leaves no scholar, that is genuine scholar, and then the people will turn to those asahab, those who are ignorant, those are the ones, he said, ru'us. Ru'us means heads. In Arabic it means a person who has a position. It means also that this person has something to distinguish him in terms of maybe his money, in terms of maybe his turban, so big that this person would turn to him as a fatwa, or in terms of his clothes, because you know for a fact, these days the people who are in such positions, given the fatwa, they have different clothes from other people. They are looking like more to a priest rather than to a sheikh. With this massive cloak which is dragging on the floor, and green hat or something, they think this is the sunnah. And the people, they go to them, and they ask, and then when they give the fatwa, they give you the wrong fatwa. So the Prophet he said, Fadallu wa adallu. They have been misguided, and also they misguided those who had asked them the question. And that is why, from this hadith, the scholars they said, Verily, this hadith it tells us that it, you should be warned against making those who are ignorant to take positions. Number two, it teaches us as well that the real leadership is the fatwa. Because the people will follow the mufti. The people, they have put their life in the trust of the scholar. So it is very important that our scholar is upon the haq. Is our scholar is a genuine scholar. Otherwise, you'll find now these people following all types of scholars. And they're not scholars. Now Sheikh Google became a scholar. Sheikh Jeeves became a scholar. Even some people, I'm not going to name them, which are known to be deviant, they became scholars, leading the people tantalizing the people. Now at the moment, the media is helping them. You've got the internet, you've got the satellite channels. They're not going to investigate whether the scholar is a scholar or not. They just put anybody there. As long as he talks nice, as long as he talks what the people want, not what the people need. There's a difference here. What the people want. They want a person who is like, you know, rolling his sleeves back, talking like this. You know, a celebrity. You know celebrity? That's what is celebrity. They don't want a person to talk like this. Allah. He's boring for them. They don't want that. They want people to learn about the religion. They want people to bring emotions into that. Yeah? Gone, make coup. Gone into the streets and make riots. That's what they want. But this is not what they need. They need Qan Allah, Qan Rasulullah. They need the real scholars. And as I said, this is our from the signs of the end of time. So we need to make sure that those people who have no qualification for fatwa to be set aside. Otherwise, those will take place. And verily, it is from the signs of the end of time. That is to seek knowledge on the hands of people who are not qualified whatsoever. Second thing, which is, they have the knowledge, but they don't implement it. And that is what the Prophet ﷺ had said. Abu Darda, narrating this hadith, he said, the Messenger of Allah was saying, هذا أوان يختلس فيه العلم. This is the time, and the Prophet of Allah is talking about the end of his time. This is the time where the knowledge will be taken away, اختلاس, taken away like hidden, in a hidden way. It is not in an obvious way, in a hidden way. This is the knowledge going to disappear in a hidden way. Until they have no power to capture any of it, any of that knowledge. Now, Ziyad ibn Labid al-Ansari, may Allah be pleased with him, is a scholar, and, sorry, he's a companion, and he's from the Ansar, and he's listening to the Prophet He said, Messenger of Allah, how can the knowledge will be stolen from us? 
while we don't know about it, and we have recited the Quran. Verily, by Allah, we will read the Quran, and we will make the people to read the Quran. We will make our children, our women, to read the Quran. Prophet he said, Thakilatka ummukayaziyat. May your mother lose your ziyat. What does that mean? I mean, may Allah make you die? No, it means, what are you talking about? Is what the Arabs say. Thakilatka ummukayaziyat. What are you talking about, ziyat? For verily, I used to consider you and reckon you one of those great scholars of the Medina. This is the Torah. This is the Injil. Torah is the old book for the Jews. And the, the Injil is the gospel, which is for the Christian. This is the Torah and the Injil with the Jews and the Christians. What did it do to them? What did it do to them? So it means that those Christians and those Jews, they had the gospel, they had the Torah, yet they were lost. They were lost. Why? Because they did not implement the knowledge that they had it. And when Jubayr, so he said, he's heard this from Abu Darda, he went to Ubad al Musamit, another companion. He said, Verily, can't you just hear what Abu Darda is saying and claiming that the Prophet ﷺ had said when he was negotiating with Ziyad ibn Labid al Ansari? So, what did he say? So, he told him, he told Ubad al Musamit what Abu Darda had said that the Prophet ﷺ said. So, he said, Verily, he had said the truth. I confirm what he said. And if you wish, I will inform you about the first knowledge that will be taken away from the people. al khushua submissiveness, khushua. You will come into the masjid, which is encompassing lots of people, and you will hardly find one person who's having khushua, person coming to pray because his society had imposed upon him to pray. Another one, he's praying, but his mind is how much profit he's gonna make after or before the Salah. A person is praying because he wants the people to see him pray. Tadkhul al-Masjid al-Jama' You'll enter the Masjid, which is a big Masjid, yet you hardly find someone who's having khushu. This is the first knowledge that will be taken away from the people. So implementing the knowledge is very important. And once you don't implement the knowledge, then the disaster is awaiting this Ummah. Ibadallah. Those are the signs that are entailed if the person sought the knowledge with those people who are not qualified and the other one when he has the knowledge and does not implement it. Now they come to the signs which are entailed upon that is the knowledge disappearing. What happens? The Prophet وسلم, he was in a gathering and he was talking to the companions. A Bidwin man came. A Arabi. Bidwin man, those people were living on their own and they are not in communication with the scholars. So the Bedouin man came. Even his name was not mentioned. So straight away he comes to the point. Messenger of Allah, interrupting him. Mata sa'a. When is the day of resurrection? When is the hour? By the way, this story was repeated a number of times. Once that the Prophet of Allah was giving a khutbah. And then this Bedouin man, another Bedouin man came and he said to him, Messenger of Allah, when is the day of resurrection? Imagine the Prophet of Allah or somebody is a khatib and making a khutbah and person, person coming from nowhere and saying, when is the day of resurrection? Huh? Stopping the khatib. What happened? People might beat him up. So here, the Prophet ﷺ was addressing the companions, not on a khutbah. This bit with him, what a sa'a. The Prophet of Allah gave a gesture that to the extent that the companion thought he did not, the Messenger of Allah did not like what the man had said. That means he's questioning something he shouldn't have asked. Then the Messenger of Allah, he said, who is that person who said so? When he finished his talk when he finished what he wanted to talk. Who said it was that person who had asked about the hour? So the man, he said, Messenger of Allah, it is me. So he said, If the amana was lost, then wait, await for the hour. The amana is lost, then, then await the hour. So what is the amana? Amana is all those sharia rules regarding the obedience of Allah and keeping away from the what is prohibited from Allah Azza wa Jal. All of that, he said, إِذَا دُيَّعَتِ الْأَمَانَةِ So how messenger of Allah that the amana will be lost? So he said, إِذَا أُسْنِدَ أَوْ إِذَا وُسِّدَ الْأَمْرُ إِلَى غَيْرِ أَهْلِهِ فَانْتَظِرِ السَّاعَةِ If that position is being given to the unqualified person, then I wait for the hour. So when the person is talking about halal and haram, is not qualified. When the person is leading the ummah for the khilafah, is not qualified. When the person who is teaching the Quran is not qualified, then I wait for the hour. 
And that, when does this happen? It does happen when we have no scholars. When the knowledge disappears. And then we find any person pretending to be a scholar. One day, Ibn Malik, one of the great scholars, he comes from the west, which is the west end, like Morocco, comes to the Bilad Sham, which is far away. And at that time, there was no trains, no planes, nothing. So it's very hard for a person to move from that place to another. To the extent even the scholars which are in the West, like Ibn Hazm, they didn't know about the Tirmidhi which were in the East. They didn't know about them. Even they were contemporary scholars. So he traveled to Bilad Sham. And then he sat in one of the masajid and he saw a person addressing the people. And he's looking at them and teaching them, but he has no knowledge. But how anybody can determine if he's got knowledge or not? Now, if you are listening to me, how can you determine if I've got knowledge? Or not? Unless you are as knowledgeable or you heard something that means maybe something odd from me, then you will determine maybe ah, he's a dodgy person. So this person is addressing the people and nobody is telling him, were you wrong or right? So if Malik is a scholar, he found out that this man is not even a scholar, nothing, nothing whatsoever. So he kept telling the people, well, who you're listening to is not a scholar. They totally looked at him, they've never seen him before. How can we know that you are a scholar and he's not a scholar? Well, he talks a lot. You know, don't talk a lot, then he's a bigger scholar than you are. He said, verily, let me debate him. And that's the mistake which the scholar has done. Let me debate him to show you that he is not a scholar. Okay? They set a debate between this scholar and the one who is a fake scholar. He's not a scholar. So he wanted to show them that he's not even qualified to teach you the Quran. So he said, Ma makhrajul alif. What is the articulation point for the letter alif? Now the makhraj in the word makhraj, the person who is qualified in teaching Quran, they will know the word makhraj. But if you don't know the word makhraj, the terminological meaning of it, then you end up in chaos. So you would bring things which are <laughs> absolutely hallucination. So he said, ma makhraju harf alif What is the articulated point of the alif? So this person now thought of an answer. He said, yes. Alif, ba, ta, tha, jim, ha, kha, da. And he started counting the alphabetic. The people were astounded. Look, he was asked one simple question. Look how big his answer is. Given 28 letters. So the people were more impressed about their own fake scholar. So, but all his answer was what? Wrong. So the people now, instead of listening to the scholar, they are more of attached to that fake scholar. Ibn Malik died only two weeks after that. You know why he died two weeks after that? Because he had grief in his heart. He's trying to tell the people what happened and look what they have done. This is, this is now the era of these days. Telling the people he's not a scholar. Who told you he's not a scholar? You don't appear on many channels as him. He's got many channels you are. You appear on such and such and peace and war and TV and everything. Which channel do you appear on? Nothing. Oh, that means it's better than you are. This is the criterion by which the people distinguish between a scholar and a scholar. How long is your beard, brother? Five inches? He's six inches. He's more knowledgeable than you are. Is that the way that we can distinguish by scholar under scholar? Ah, he talks 24 hours. How many hours do you talk? He's 24 hours? He's 24 hours, seven. Subhanallah, seven, 21. He's better than me. He's better than you are. Is this the way forward to know a scholar or not a scholar. And that's what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alihi wa Sallam he said, if the position is being given to the unqualified person, then I wait for the hour. And also when, and this is the most important point, when you have the knowledge disappearing, then you end up with the Haraj. What is the Haraj? Killing al qatl And that is something I don't need to prove it to you. Do I? Do I need to prove it to you? That if there is no knowledge, there is killing. All you have to do, just Egypt. Just type in Egypt and what's happening. Syria, what is happening. Lebanon, what is happening. Iraq, what is happening. Libya, what is happening. Tunisia, what is happening. And then you'll know. I can't prove it more than this. Wallahi, wallahi, if we have heard what the Prophet Sallallahu had said regarding these issues, nothing of that will happen. But because we're too far away from what Allah had said and what the Prophet Sallallahu had said. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تقوم الساعة حتى يكثر الحرج. The hour will not take place until حرج will increase and will be a lot. They said, Messenger of Allah, what is الحرج? He said, القتل, killing, the killing. والذي نفسي بيده. By the one in whose hand is my soul, it, the day will not disappear, nor the night. That means the end of the time will not come until the people they will start killing one another. The killer, he doesn't know why he killed the killed one, nor the killed one, he knows why the killer had killed him. Nobody knows. 
So he said, Messenger of Allah, how is it? Then he said, the killer and the killed one, both of them in the hellfire. Okay, well the killer we know is in the hellfire, but what about the killed one? Because he was eager to kill the killer before he was killed. So both of them, they were trying to kill each other, but the killer was more powerful, or maybe he had a, a sudden move, huh? a martial artist or something, huh? and then he killed the other person. But the other person, if he had power, he would have killed his brother, and both of them are to be in the hellfire. So Ibadullah, when does this happen? Look through this hadith and listen to it. Prophet Sallallahu which is hadith Abu Musa al-Ash'ar, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Verily, before the day of resurrection would take place, a lot of killings will take place. Do you want more than, just in the last two years, more than 200,000 pounds? Not 200,000, 200,000 people. Imagine pounds now, I'm saying. Because, do you know why? Do you know what? I'll tell you why. If we had 50,000 cats were killed in Japan, I think there would be a United Nations resolution against that, isn't it? Huh? 50,000 cats have been killed. Ban on Japan. Don't transfer for them anything. Ban them because we have to stop them killing the cats. And this is more than 200,000 people. I'm talking about more than that. It's about more than a million. If I add what is happening in Libya to what is happening in Syria, what is happening in Egypt, what had happened already in Iraq, more than a million. Lots of people have been killed. And the people that don't know why they've been killed. So listen to this hadith. Messenger of Allah, what is the haraj? He said, killing one another. The Muslim, they said, oh, Messenger of Allah, verily in each year we kill so and so from the mushriks. They thought the Prophet of Allah is talking about the killing against the disbelievers. In the war against those who are kuffar. Oh, mashallah, we're killing every year so and so from the mushrikun. He said, the Prophet of Allah, no, it's not you killing the disbelievers. You are killing one another. You will be killing your own cousin your own next of kin, you will be killing your own neighbor. Messenger of Allah, we're going to have our praise with us. I mean, we only kill our cousin, kill our neighbor, kill our next of kin. You have our brain with us? Or are we, no, no brains, loonies, no, what happened to us? How can we kill, you know, my cousin, I'm going to kill my neighbor, I'm going to kill next of my kin, even my son, I'm going to do that. So the Prophet Sallallahu he said, no, the brain will be taken in that time. It will be lifted, it will be removed. And there will be some people there, running the show, who has no brains. Thinking, and the people think, they have brains, but they don't have brains. So, there will be no brains, and there will be a bunch of people, running the show, thinking they have brains. Thinking that they're running the show in the right way, but they're not. And people that think they are okay, about Allah, do I need to prove that for you? Do I need to show you what is happening in all around you? This is because of what? Because of not listening to what Allah had said and what the Prophet ﷺ had said. And all of that because of the removal of the knowledge. It's because the, the ignorance is prevalent. Can I ask you, Muhammad, to put a fan on you? Remember, I get hot a bit because I'm moving about and I'm talking. So we just uh, bring some air. It's like Allah. And that's a clue for you, Hadul <laughs> Sinqon. Right. The third issue, when the people have ignorance prevailed and prevalence of the ignorance, then you'll have people saying haram halal and things are to be halal haram. Prophet sallallahu he said, verily, there will be in my ummah people who will make the following things which are haram to be halal. Fornication. Fornication. Al-hira. wal harir that is the silk for the men, the pure silk for the men, because it's okay for the women. And al kham the wine, and al ma'azif the music. Now this hadith is mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari. Yes, it is mu'allaq, and we know it's mu'allaq, but it's mu'allaq in the form, but it's actually sahih in its authentication. Regardless of whom who had said it is not sahih. It is pure authentic, and it's linked to the Imam al-Bukhari, to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. لا يكونن في أمة أقوام يستحلون الحرى والحرير والخمر والمعاصف. They will be amongst my um people who will make these things which are haram to be halal. الحرى الزنا. Is it true that people are making zina halal? Yes. How do they make it halal? At the moment, they are not making the word zina halal. But what leads to zina is halal. Free mixing. Who says it's haram? Most of our universities in Arab countries, although Muslim countries, are free mixing. And that would lead to what? To zina. Now we look at the women. 
And what happens to the women these days? Because of what is happening on the internet and so on and so forth, they are imitating those you know, models. So you find, for example, women, she's putting the makeup, and the makeup is no problem about it. I even know some of her, which we think they are good brothers. MashaAllah, they are not really worried about their, their wives or their daughters to follow the trend and the fashion in the makeup. A'udhu Billah. So they're making the zina halal, so free mixing. And also we have dancing. No problem if the women dances in front of the man. A'udhu Billah. Maybe that doesn't happen, if, for example, the women dances in front of a stranger, but in front of their own relatives. No problem in front of a cousin. A'udhu Billah. That's as well as well as a start for the zina. So all of that, as the Prophet ﷺ, he said, these people are making zina halal. Then the third, second one. Al-Harir. Al-Harir means the silk. The silk is haram upon the men. It's halal for the women. And when we say the silk, it means the pure silk, not the artificial silk. The silk which is made by that worm. That one, people make it halal. They want to have the silkiest clothes they can get as long as they are rich. And it's very expensive, by the way, to buy a silk clothes which is made by the worm. Right. Third one, <coughs> Al-Khamr. Al-Khamr is intoxication and it's haram. But in our Muslim land, they have shops now, they call it Al-Mashrubat al spiritual drink. What do they mean by that? Spiritual drink. Uh, they got it from here, spirits, you know, that will lift up your spirits. If you drink it, you'll be on top of the world. Huh? You don't be on the top of the world, you'll be at the bottom of the feet. Everybody will step on top of you, everybody will punch you. Uh, you wake up, you find that, for example, you go to a shop where a person got black eye. You know why? Because the last night you're having a good time, you know, drunken. He ended up being beaten up, and this is a good time for them, huh? Black eye. That's what is happening. So the khamr in our Muslim land has been called spirits. That means we'll lift up your spirits. Wallahi, it does not do so. Then al ma'azif. Musiqa. We do have scholars these days. They said, no problem. Al musiqa al ghair sahiba. In Arabic means it musiqa, the musiqa which is not uh, a rocking music. So if it's a classical, no problem. Huh? These scholars. Those are the ones who are telling the people to go and make an upright and so on and so Those are the scholars, they're saying, no problem. Ah, classical. So it's Beethoven, ah, no problem. But don't go rock and roll. Rock and roll is haram. So why is this haram? Why is this halal? Nobody knows. And that's why I said the Prophet وسلم, he said, Verily, in Allah la yaqbidu ilm and tiza. Allah will not remove the knowledge by removing it from the chest of the person. That means delete and then will be knowledge. You know, he will remove the knowledge by passing death upon those people who are truly knowledgeable and also setting them aside where the people start to ask people who have no qualification whatsoever. So it is very important to learn that the person when you have ignorance, he will start making halal haram and haram halal. Also when the ignorance prevails, this is the end, uh, the signs of the end of time, you will have people worshipping other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Listen to what the Prophet had said. Verily, لا تقوم الساعة حتى تطرب أَلْيَاتُ دَوْسٍ أَوْ نِسَاءُ دَوْسٍ حَوْلَ ذِي الْخَلَصَةِ That is, the hour will not take place until the backside of those women from the tribe of Daus start dancing round the Khalasa. The Khalasa is a, one of these idols or statues. Now, this is happening in Africa. And I've seen it, wallahi, with my own eyes. There are people and women, so on and so forth, they set up the fire and they're like worshipping and they start, you know, dancing around it and they're making this as a sort of a ritual for the sake of whatever they are worshipping and this is not going to take place amongst just the Africans who are not Muslims no it's going to take place amongst those people who say la ilaha illallah you are wondering that people who say la ilaha illallah would do shirk oh, listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says la yu'minu akthabuhum illa wa hum mushrikun la yu'minu akthabuhum billahi illa wa hum mushrikun most of them when they believe in Allah they believe in Allah but they are doing shirk. And that's what is happening in Kaaba. You want to see shirk? Go to Kaaba. Kaaba is a symbol of monotheism. Draw up. You go to Kaaba. You'll find shirk there. You'll find people that go, they don't even pray. They don't even pray. They don't even pray. Wallahi, they don't pray. Huh? Did you hear about this person who said, I don't pray behind a Wahhabi? So he goes to Mecca and doesn't pray behind Wahhabi. What is Wahhabi? He doesn't know it's Wahhabi. Wahhabi belongs to Saudi Arabia. And Jordanian. It doesn't matter. Wahhabi as well. He doesn't pray behind him. So these people, they commit shirk there. And you see them, for example, wax, 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 wax on the cabin, on the stones. What are they doing? Some of them holding scissors, trying to cut a piece of, of that cloth on top of the cabin. Maybe he wants to sell it on eBay or 
used as a souvenir to make tabarruk with it. True, I have seen scissors, taken scissors. Well, Allah. That is what is happening. Shirk, and that's what the Prophet said, and he says, when the knowledge disappears, then shirk will prevail as well. Ibad Allah, after this, we come to the point where we say that when the ignorance prevail and the knowledge disappears, then you'll have the fitan. And this is what we're going to end up with, and open you for your question and answers, the fitan. Fitan, which is tribulation. And this tribulation, when we talk about fitan, our companion for the fitan is Hudayf ibn Yaman. Hudayf ibn Yaman, radiallahu anhu, he is the person who is specialized into the fitan. You look at a doctor who is a surgeon, a doctor who is, for example, a, a therapy doctor, or a doctor who specializes in diabetes, you've got now a doctor who is specialist in the fitna. That is Hudayf ibn Yaman, radiallahu anhu. Hudayf ibn Yaman, he said, verily, the Prophet, sallam, one day he had dressed us. He had dressed us from the fajr until sunset. He prays, then he talks. Then he goes from the pulpit down, and he prays the whole, and then he talks. Then he goes to the asr, and then he goes up to the pulpit, and then he talks. And he said everything from day number one until the day of judgment. He mentioned everything. And not everything in details, everything as in general. So the Prophet ﷺ had mentioned every fitna that's going to take place which is a major fitna, from the day one, which is from the Prophet's time, until the day of resurrection. So Hudayfa, he says, حَفِظَهُ مَنْ حَفِظَهُ وَنَسِيَهُ مَنْ نَسِيَهُ Some of us had memorized, some of us had forgotten. And Hudayfa, he says, I have memorized most of it, but I have forgotten. But every time there's a fitna comes, it clicks to my mind. Ah, that's what the Prophet ﷺ had talked about. Oh, that's what the Messenger of Allah had warned us against. So Hudayf ibn al-Yaman, he comes to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to confirm what he had learned from that hadith and also to make sure that he is himself secured when the time of the fitna takes place. Because you see, the Prophet of Allah, when he talked about the fitna, it looks like that even the companions will be indulging to this fitna, which it happened. When the Prophet of Allah died, the fitna took place. So Hudayf al understood from the Prophet of Allah that the fitna is too close. So he wanted to immunize himself. He came to the Prophet of Allah. And he was saying, verily the people used to ask about the good. But I used to ask about the evil time. In case I live to see it. So I said, Messenger of Allah, you know that we were in Jahiliya, pre-Islamic days. We were people eating the carrion, killing the women, the children. Huh? We were devouring the wealth of the orphan. We were making riba. And it was a bad time. Allah brought you, alhamdulillah, this is good. After you, after this good time, when you go away, when you pass, O Messenger of Allah, when you die, is it going to be evil after that? Prophet Sallallahu said, yes, there will be evil. Now this evil, the scholars had differed, what is the evil that the Prophet Sallallahu talked about? But here, in this hadith, the Prophet of Allah went quiet, and he said evil. Hudayf al Yaman understood that I should not really detail this evil. So he did not ask about it. And that's why some of the scholars said that the evil was the conflict that took place between the companions. And we are being commanded not to talk about it. Not to indulge ourselves in what took place between Mu'ayyim Nabi Sufyan and Ali Nabi Talib. May Allah be pleased with them. And between Ali Nabi Talib and Aisha, may Allah be pleased with them. All of that. To keep quiet about it. Because they're all of the mushtahidun. They made ishtihad. One of them is correct and one of them is wrong. But the wrong one is not being sinned. He's been rewarded as well. So they made. So because this fitna, Allah had made us isma, gave us isma against indulging into it with our hands. So let's give isma to our tongues, not to indulge into it. Just like Allah had gave us isma, that means we're not indulging into it. We did not share and participate in that battle. So we should not as well participate and share in that tongue. Don't talk about it. Then he said straight away, okay, Prophet of Allah, after that evil that you talked about, is there anything to be good? He says, yes. But it will be tainted. Tainted means polluted. It's not clear, you know, good. There is tainted in it. So there's dukhat, dakhat. Messenger of Allah, what is tainted here? I want to know what, what, what is that dakhat. So I could really, what is that pollution in it? So the Prophet, وسلم, he said, qawmun ta'arifu minhum wa 
People, you'll know some and you don't know some of it. That means people, they do something, you approve some of what they do, and you disapprove of something what they do. They do something which is not sharia, something which is not from the sharia. But, their sign, they will take other than my sunnah and will guide to other than my guidance. <coughs> In another narration he says, Verily, قال رجال لهم قلوب الشياطين في جثمان إنس People who have the hearts of devils, but in a human being form. So, physically speaking, talking about the body, it is a human being. But in the heart is what? Heart of a devil. Now, if you want to come up with a better description to say how bad our Muslim leaders, would you come up with a worse description or a better description than the Prophet ﷺ describing those having the heart of devils? in a human being form. Can you come up with that? You can't. No matter what you said regarding those tyrant leaders, you cannot come up with more than this. Prophet will have given you, that is the heart of a devil inside a human being form. All right, we're gonna know what's gonna happen now. What should I do? Okay, Messenger of Allah, after that tainted good, is it gonna be evil? He said, yes, that's pure evil. What is it? Messenger of Allah, what is it? قَالْ قَوْمٌ مِّنْ بَنِي جِلْدَتِنَا يَتَكَلَّمُونَ عَلَىٰ That is دُعَاتٌ عَلَىٰ أَبْوَابِ جَهَنَّمْ مَنْ أَجَابَهُمْ إِلَيْهِ قَذَفُوهُ فِيهَا There are callers on the gates of the fire. He who responds to the call, they will throw him in the fire. Sit from there, Messenger of Allah. Describe them for us, Messenger of Allah. That there are people from our skin. They are Arabs. يَتَكَلَّمُونَ بِهَا لِسِنَتِنَا They talk the same language, Arabic. There are Arabs, قَوْمٌ بَنِ جِدَّتِنَا يَتَكَلَّمُونَ بِأَلْسِنَتِنَا أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ Messenger of Allah, if that time is going to be catching me, I'm going to live to see that time. What should I do? A time where call is for the hellfire. As soon as you respond to that call, they will throw you into it. Those are from the Arabs. And those who speak the same language. What can we do against them? Messenger of Allah will say, stick to the main body of the Muslims. And their Imam. So they have Imam Khalifa and the men, stick to them. Even if you have to lash your back, stick to him. Isma Watir here on the way. Messenger of Allah. But what about if there is no Imam and there is nobody for the Muslims, no main body for the Muslims, no Jama'ah? What should I do? He said, run in the land and seek for a Khalifa. Even if he has to lash your back, run and seek him Khilafa and Isma Watir. Look at that. And maybe that bit of narration, somebody like Nero never heard about it. They were the Prophet of Allah, so he had said to the Hudayfa, if you don't find an Imam, if you heard an Imam in any land, go run to him. If you heard about a Khalifa, go run to him. Even if to be tyrant, go and make him even lash you back, but here and obey. You know what he's talking about, the Prophet of Allah? He's talking about safety and security. If there's a Khalifa, run for the safety and security. Forget about people who want freedom. People want democracy. People, wallahi, they don't know what they're talking about. For the scholars, they said, I would rather spend 60 years under a leadership which is tyrant, rather than to live one day under no leader. Do you know why? Because there's no leader, there's chaos. There's no leader, there's killing. There's no leader, everybody can kill everybody. There's no leader, you can't have food. Prophet ﷺ, he said, Man asbaha aminan fi sir, mu'afan fi badani. If the person wakes up in the morning, secure in his neighborhood, secure in his family, secure in his children, that means, alhamdulillah. Secondly, قال, and he has health in his body. Nothing is painful in his body. Alhamdulillah, healthy. And the third one, he said, wealthy. That means got the provision of his own day. Listen to that. It's the provision for the day. Why do you have to worry about the following day? Some people worry about the following year. I want, what am I going to be shopping for the following year? Subhanallah. And they start piles up, you know, lots of stuff, you know, lots of shampoos and lots of soaps. And, and once they go down, how many left? 20? 20 bottles of shampoos. <laughs> Let me go and run. I'm making them 25. He's worried. You're not sensible, man. The sensible man, you just think of the day. You don't think about what is the more. How you got your food for tonight? So, so many people, have they got the food for tonight? They've got everybody, they've got the food for months and years. Subhanallah, and still worried. Because they have been preoccupying themselves 
وين؟ شوبينج 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 لا لا اله الا الله لا اله الا الله شوبينج 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 وات ايفر غين بي شوبينج وي غوت نيكست وي غوت ذا نو نيكست وي غوت اتس كامينغ اب ذيس باجن از اول ذا تايم ماركت ذا ثينك اباوت ذا ماركت ذا دين بري اوكيباي ذا تايم وذ وات وذ لا اله الا الله محمد رسول الله سبحان الله سو يو هاف ذي ثري ثينجز فيرست اوف اول سيكوريتي نمبر 2 ذات از هيلث اند باي ذا واي ذا هيلث از ا فيري فيري بيج ايشو If you want to know what is the amount of the barakah or the blessing that Allah has given you with the health, go to the hospital. Look at these people who can't walk, can't breathe. He's all the time crying, he's all the time shouting. He looks at the people who are healthy like a crown on top of their head. He wouldn't have that crown. So a person who is really wealthy but not healthy means nothing. True or not? But I'll tell you what, a person who is healthy and he is wealthy but without safety he is nothing as well. The scholars were asked, why the Prophet started with the safety? Why do you say, if you wake up safe in your neighborhood? He didn't start with the health or the wealth. You know what the scholars have said? The Salaf, what they have said? Because safety comes first. And they have made an example, which is a good example for us to learn. They said, if there's a sheep, and the sheep had a broken leg, that means health-wise, it's not good. You give her some food, fodder, grass. She might maybe uh, not eat it for one, two, three days until she gets a bit better, she'll start eating. But now, bring a healthy sheep. Nothing wrong with her legs. Tie her up, put the food next to her, and tie up a roof next to her. The sheep would stay for one year not eating anything, she would die. She would not eat anything. Why? Because she's been stripped off from the security. Healthy, and they got the food, Yet, no safety. What happened to the sheep? Dies. The sheep, she's crippled. Huh? She has the food, but she has security. After she gets a bit better, she starts eating. But not when there is no safety. And that is what is happening. People now these days, in those countries, do you want to know about safety, how precious it is? Ask those people who are being deprived from safety, they will tell you. And ask them. Well, like some of them. Uh, I know a person. Wallahi, I know him, and I'm not really joking. I know this person whom his friend is at, mashallah, is a doctor, and he's a Sunni doctor from Iraq. He said, I've got a Shia doctor with him in the hospital. You know what's happening in Iraq? Killing, until today, killing. So he says to his friend, the doctor, and the doctor is telling me these words. So it's from him, it's a high chain of Islam. It's not really one person from one, just the person he told my friend, and my friend is telling me. He said, this doctor, he's a Shia. He says, I had five children. Three, Saddam Hussein had executed them. I don't know what, what reason. He would say, he says, Wallahi, I love Saddam to come back again and kill the other two, no problem. Do you know why? There's no safety and security. I don't mind if Saddam comes back again and kills the other two and I will be happy. Because what is happening? And I was killing, not just killing for the sake of anything. Killing, no safety, no security. Look at the people in Egypt. Don't listen to those people who go to sleep in Egypt. They don't know the person. Shall I put my beard on or shall I not? Because I put my beard, I might be killed from the government. If I don't put my beard, I'll be killed from the Khwanis. Whatever. It's happening with Algeria. The Algerian, alhamdulillah, they have learned the lesson very the hard way. 600,000 in 10 years. 600,000. Sheikh al Bani was telling them, this is not the way forward. This is not the way forward. He was telling them, they won the election. You see, we're right. Sheikh al Bani wrong. Sheikh al Bani said, Faqaqi al Sabun. What is Faqaqi Usabu means? Like, you know the bubble? The bubble of the soap look huge. The bubble, but poke it like this, it's gone. Faqaqi Usabu. Wallahi Shaykh Ali Halabi. Wallahi Shaykh Muhammad Musa Nasr. Wallahi Shaykh Mashur. All of them they thought, I think Shaykh Al-Bani was wrong. They won the election, they should read. Shaykh Al-Bani says, Faqaqi Usabu. Straight away after that election, what happened? Massacres. People can't go outside. They don't know what to do. Each person may be carrying a, a beard in his pocket. If he sees a beard man, he pulls a beard. I'm a beard man. If he sees a policeman, he takes a beard off. Because he doesn't want to be killed. He doesn't know what to do. In Iraq, holding two IDs. One he says Ali, one says Omar. He sees a Shia, Ali. He sees a Sunni, Omar. Two IDs because he's going to be killed. He doesn't know who's going to kill him. Massacres. Harj. This is the Harj. Al-Qatl. Lots of people killing their own neighbors, their own next of kin. In Libya, people they killed one another. So what are they going to do? The ones who have been killed are, uh, are non-Muslims? No, they are Libyans speaking Arabic, the same. So these are the ones from there and with them. They are Libyans killing one another. More than 
I'm going to say more than 100,000. Let's say more than 10,000. 10,000, the blood of one Muslim is more sacred to us than the Kaaba. Never mind one 10,000. Prophet of Allah, he had repossessed the Kaaba. Do you know how many soldiers he had when he opened the Kaaba? Not conquered, by the way. The conquered, the word is not right. Conquered means you conquer with force. Prophet of Allah did not enter with force. Conquer means you take the land that doesn't belong to you. The land belongs to the Prophet Muhammad. He repossessed Mecca. He had opened Mecca. How many people were there? 10,000. 10,000 is nothing for these people. I mean, collateral damage. 10,000. SubhanAllah. 10,000. A human being. One of them, your son, you will know what is the impact of that. What is happening, guys? No knowledge. No scholars. So I have my advice to you. This is the signs of the end of time. That people who are the knowledgeable, people come, don't listen to them. They listen to the one who is the one who says, go and fight. Go in the street. Make an uprise. Go and say, down, down, down. Follow the steps of those Westerners. Wallahi, this is not right. What you need to do is just to have safety and you need to have your provision and your health. Do you think those people are shouting for the sake of Islam to be taken the leadership? Wallahi, you're wrong. You think that those few groups, which are, mashallah, they're nice in Syria, they're going to have the last word when the president goes away. They're going to have the last word. They're going to have the, the last word. That means they're going to be controlling the country. What happened to you? You've seen Iraq. You've seen Libya now at the moment. Libya now is Libya's, not Libyan, Libya's. Each tribe is going his own land. And to one plane to travel from one side to another. In Libya, it has to have what? Permission. And there was a gunner down. Libyans become Libyans. And that's what's going to happen to Egypt. I'm going to ask our Sheikh Mashur, Hafizahullah. And these are the words of the scholar. He said, what is coming ahead is very bad. He said, and he read in the hadith, that is, Syria will be taken and divided by the Romans. The Romans means Europeans. Egypt, he, he searched and he searched. And the Sheikh Mashur, he said, searched. That means he searched. He couldn't find what is the, the result or the end result for Egypt. You don't know what's happening. Chaos taking place. So what is my advice? To listen to the scholars. And if you are there, stick to your house. For the Prophet Sallallahu he had given this advice to Uqba Mu'amir al-Juhari. When he asked the Messenger of Allah, inform me of an act, make me to go to paradise. Messenger of Allah, ma sabirun najah, what is the salvation? How can I gain salvation? He said to him, first of all, amzik alayka lisanak, keep that in control. Your tongue, what comes out of your mouth. Number two, wabki ala khati'atik, weep over your sin, repent from, to Allah from your sins. And then, wal yasaka baytuk, keep to your house, keep to your house. Your house needs you. You know some people, their job is they go very early in the morning, the kids are asleep. They come very late in the evening, the kids are asleep. What sort of, mashallah, nurturing you have done and bring it up? The children can't see you, not in the morning, not in the evening. Is this the way forward? See, I'm providing for the house. Yes, just like you're providing as well for food, you have to provide them as well another type of food. Spiritual, they need to see you. You are a person, don't run away from your responsibility. People, lots of people, brothers, they run away from their responsibility and then they end up, my son is coming well with a girlfriend. Well, it's because of your fault. My daughter, she's run away from me. Because of your fault. You have to teach. You have something on top of you as well. As a responsibility. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you do have now 12 minutes for questions and answers. And I need to shoot. And I mean the word shoot. Shoot as in speed up. I'll have another lecture in Huddlesfield, supposed to be at, uh, if the Imam read, inshallah, Surah Ali Imran, I, I'll be there <laughs> 10 past 7. <laughs> now, nah. we have any questions, please go ahead, of what we have heard. Don't worry. Uh, I mean, any question that related to the topic or is not related to the topic, I don't mind. Yalla Mu'ashaykh Muhammad, tell them. You are Sheikh Muhammad as well? Uh, yeah, yeah, the situation uh, Syria. Uh, now that the um, fight has started, um, obviously um, the, the leader is not, most of the scholars we hear, they say he's not Muslim. So now that the fight has started, what is the position of Abdul Salamah regarding the situation there? 
What is the position of the Muslim regarding what is happening? Are they going to listen to me? <laughs> Are they going to listen to me? That's the question. Are they going to listen to our scholars? That's the question. But the person who had made up his mind is very hard to listen to. He doesn't want to listen. Our situation is to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah Azza will stop the blood and the messages. And I'll tell you what Sheikh Mashur's dua, he says, I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to give us Syria or Egypt any type of leader, just or tyrant, as long as he brings security back to the situation, to the region. Wallahi is his dua. I wish Allah, oh Allah, any leader, Valim or not Valim, just to hold on to the situation. A tyrant leader, because the Prophet said, Hudayfa, if you heard about a Khalifa, even as a tyrant, go there. Fasma wa ata. Even if he lashes you back, takes your money. Fasma, he emphasizes, Fasma wa ata. What is it? Hear and obey. The recipe of success, hear and obey. Hear and obey. Even if he takes money, he had deployed his children. All his children are rich, and my children are not. And they deserve to be in the position. Don't listen to this. For Valili, Abdullah ibn Umar, he has more right than Yazid and more right than his father Muawiyah radiallahu anhumah but yet he did not complain he just went quiet he was more right to lead but he went quiet why? because of the bloodshed if you start saying oh it's me I'm more deserved I've got more qualification I'm PhD and he is uh, preparatory, preparatory school or he's having no education uh, me I should go and then you start the coup then you start the fight and what happened? killing and they've learned the lesson. Companions have consensus regarding the Khuruj. No coup. Now, against Syria. Oh, leader is a disbeliever. SubhanAllah. A leader is a disbeliever. Yes, the leaders are of two types. Either a believer or a disbeliever. And the believer is of two types. Either he is a tyrant or he's a just. Do you have any other leaders? No other leaders. Two leaders. Muslim, non-Muslim. Muslim is of two types. Just, not just. True. I don't know, yeah, 50% just and 60% just or not just. Okay. Now, the just consensus, there's no coup. Unjust consensus, there's no coup. We come now to the one who is what? That is, the one who is not Muslim. They're not Muslim. Still, there are dawabat wa usus, there is principles there. That is, al maslaha. That is, what is the benefit? Can we, for example, take the leadership from this guy who is a non Muslim in the lowest of costs, where there will be no bloodshed, then that's the conditions. Condition number one, that I need to have a president ready. Where is that president who's going to take place now? You know who's going to be taking place? Now the one who is in charge of the majlis, who's going to take a rule after this governor, is being hit by a Christian, mashallah. A Christian person. So who's going to be leading? The brothers who are, mashallah, wasting their blood, wallahi, this is a trap. Wallahi, it's a trap. For you, the brothers, to go and send your children, send yourself, go and shed your blood for the sake of nothing. Don't fall for that trap. Don't fall for that trap. It's a trap. It's a trap for you. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you stop this massacre. This massacre which has been run by the outsiders. Not just the insiders, the outsiders, they're running the show. They want to kill us. Wallahi, the borders now, they're open. You've got a beard? Go ahead and kill yourself. Alhamdulillah, we'll get rid of you. I'm happy to get, we'll get rid of you. Because the brother killing a brother. The Syrians are waking up for this as well. So now, the leader is Kafir. So what about the army? Kafir? The army. Some of them are Nusayri. And some of them are not. Even the Nusayri, we don't say each Nusayri is a Kafir. Unless he believes in the Nusayri. Some of them they don't know what is Nusayri. Some of them even left. Some of them even against the president. Some, very few. And most of the army is from the Sunni. So the Muslim killing each other. Sunni killing one Sunni. That's what is happening. And now the army which is fighting is most of it from outside, nothing from Syrians. It's being paid a lot of money. Countries paying them a lot of money. It's, it's got a salary. You know, a person is really poor. Give him a ride, mashallah, 2,000 pounds a month. He never dreamt about 2 pounds a month. 2,000 pounds or 5,000 pounds a month. He will go and kill. He's had secured his children. It doesn't matter what he's fighting for. Is he going to listen to me? To stop the bloodshed? He's going to listen to me. He's made up his mind. We, well, one person, alhamdulillah, we dragged him. Uh, we, he last had to listen to us, and we took him to the sheikhs, and we wrote him, because he's our friend, and he left. He's been brainwashed. His father was crying to us, coming to, I know, a student of yours, and blah. I went to Jordan, I, we dragged him, we took him. Already he had shaved his beard, just to go on the border, to pass from Turkey.
to the place and make jihad, subhanAllah. And then he realized, realized how naive he was. I would say how idiot he was. Allahu musta'ala. So, yes, the leadership is now, he's not believers. They would say, we have a person who's taken in charge. We have the maslah taken, that is minim, minimum cost for this, no problem. But this is, cannot be determined by you know, lots of groups. So those groups in between each other, they're killing one another. They're not with one until what behind one man. It's called Jaysh al Hur. Jaysh al Hur is not Islamic. Jaysh al Hur. What is Hur? They do anything they want. SubhanAllah, they, have, they need da'wah, these people. They need da'wah. In Syria, I know for a fact that breaking your fast in Ramadan is openly done. Openly done. I've been there. Not a single masjid in Dimashq except has got a grave. Very few, two or three or four. All of the grave, Sufis have been controlling the whole area. So what are you talking you think, MashaAllah, we're going to liberate Syria, liberate from what? You're going to send Syria back. The army of Syria is going to be demolished. The army of Syria, which is demolished, already Iraqi, which was the fourth biggest army. Fourth, imagine, Iraqi army was the fourth biggest army at the time of Saddam. Dismantled it. And you find the army, what? A shoemaker, car washer. Car wash and he's a lieutenant colonel. He was people used to like this and scared of him. Car wash, car wash, subhanallah. Car wash from an army, army has been dismantled, and that's what their idea is to dismantle the army. And Egypt now is the biggest army. You know, the Gulf, they're having with the army, <laughs> you know, a small squadron from me, they will, you know, penetrate the whole of Gulf countries. So, only the Egyptian army, how is going to finish it? Nothing. So now they're making it lawful for those Muslim people to go and say, this policeman, he is kafir, murtad, go and kill him. Kafir, murtad, he prays, la ilaha illallah, his name is Muhammad or Ahmed. It's just because he's with Sisi and not with Mursi. <laughs> but those people who doesn't know, Sisi is the one who taken over and Mursi is the one who took over before. The coup that you have legalized against Husni Mubarak, who said it's a coup which is against Mursi's hal, not hal, not hal. Just like you have legalized the first coup, you have opened now coup phenomena. That's why Sheikh Mushu said, I wish that just any leader take over and that's it. Finish the killing. Taran or not taran. Stop the killing. We want to stop the killing. So when Mursi is gone, he's going to another president will say, no, no, it will be a coup against him. Because if you legalize the first coup, until Allah Ta'ala Ta'ala A'lam, I don't know when it's going to stop the massacres. And I see the brother here is looking at me because I need to go to fly to was it Huddleston? Huddersfield. Huddersfield, inshallah. So uh, uh, the last question, yeah, last question because I know, brother, you have a question? Last question. Uh, but I'm a bit concerned about our secular system and our secular projects as well, if you want to call it, as a dismantling our Islam in our schools and universities and colleges. Uh, just recently, I work in education myself. Sure. I see a, a Muslim girl and a Muslim boy mm. all wearing their job mm. and they were kissing in the open. Mm. So I went over like a good Muslim, tried to give them nasiya, mm. and uh, for that I got in trouble, pulled, mm. and pulled into an office and, and told that they said that you're not allowed to do this. And I mm. said, we, you allow us to pray, we have a chaplaincy at college. So why can't, why are we not allowed to give one Muslim? But uh, I see, see, they are in our country, no problem. In our Muslim country, they allow us as well. It's no problem. Actually, they are more secure in the university to kiss one another rather than outside the university because the government cannot enter the university and stop these people from doing whatever they want to do. So, uh, I mean, you are living in a country and you are happy to live in here. That's, that's, these are the rules. So, sending our children to such colleges where there's free mixing, that's what you're going to end up with. You're putting fire next to petrol, what's going to happen? Big fire. So you can't have to take the fire away from the petrol. So I can't complain against what is here. Actually, I should, I should really, if I want, if I have a choice, I would say thank you very much for letting us to talk and call people like that. You know this talk I'm saying? I will not be able to say it in Jordan. Maybe. I'll be having people maybe throwing stones at me. If I said it in Egypt, they'll kill me. Wallah. So Alhamdulillah, I'm happy that I've got this space of freedom. I could say what I want to say. I'm not really, see, this is a worry, but as I said to you, because we are living in such a place. But in our Muslim countries, well, I know, well, I know. There are fornication, well, Iyadullah, in the college. I tell you what, the women, they go to our colleges there, they go to a model show. 
They put the best of makeup because they don't put. Here you find the girl, she's looking awful. Because she's coming for teach learning, you know. She's looking awful. She's not really making that makeup. But then, the top of makeup. I myself, I don't mind entering a university which is for in England, which is, doesn't belong to the Muslims, rather than to enter a university in my country, which I know for a fact is a fitna place. Subhanakallah, Muhammad, Ashad al and stuff. Jazakallah khair for listening. And I'm sorry, I want to keep longer, but the brothers had a clash between two lectures. Uh, we would have start, would have wished to start half past four, then I would have even uh, uh, sort of explored and even expanded in terms of the size of the end of day, end of time. But because they've started half past five, and we have a talk which is after Maghrib in Haddlesfield, which is, inshallah, we'll make it there. Subhanakallah. Subhanakallah. Om Please, all, all the brothers and sisters, um, remain for Maghrib, inshallah, after Maghrib, we'll serve, serve some food, inshallah. Oh, we'll serve some food. Assalamu alaikum.